Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerCodes. Welcome to Power Tip 42. In this Power Tip, we're going to discuss replacing integrated MOSFET drivers with discrete transistors. This is a very simple circuit that you can add to the output of your control IC to drive MOSFETs. Many times people look at these kind of circuits and, and then go to the data sheet on the particular bipolar transistors and decide for themselves that these drivers can't put out much current. However, that's not the case. In this picture here on the right, we're showing the drive current that we got out of this particular driver driving into a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. The vertical dimensions are two amps per division. And so in this case, when we had a positive uh, drive current coming out of the driver, we were able to drive over two amps and in the negative going case, we, we were right at two amps. And these are low level bipolar transistors that typically run at about 100 milliamps or so. There are also cheap high current drivers. One particular manufacturer makes these lines of uh, transistors, F FMMT618, and you can compare the, the current capability of this bipolar to the 3904 that we saw in the previous chart, you can see that the HFEs are dro dropping off pretty significantly at half an amp of drive current, whereas you continue to have really good drive capability out to maybe three or four amps with these other, other transistors. So they'll be even more effective in your drivers. Now here's a cute trick. You can add a couple parts and make yourself an isolated positive and negative driver with a, a simple bipolar driver that we saw previously. In this case, uh, we're driving the primary of the little signal transformer here with bipolar signals. They're either going plus and minus for limited duty factor or they can be a 50% drive also coming across. And so when we have positive voltage going into the transformer, we have positive voltage coming out and there's two paths that current flow. Current flows through D1 to charge C1. And so now we're building a positive bias supply with this little diode here. And then also current drives into the base of Q1. It's amplified by Q1 and it provides a high current drive to our MOSFET device. In the negative direction, the circuit works pretty much the same, same way. Negative voltage into the transformer, negative voltage out, charge the bypass capacitor on your little bias supply, and then also drive the MOSFET. This circuit is very advantageous when you're using it with MOSFETs. If you're running a 50% drive, this gives you a, a negative gate drive. And the negative gate drive is very important to turn the transistor off as fast as you possibly can. If you're driving with a unipolar drive signal, the gate voltage only goes to ground. And that voltage is not very far below the threshold voltage of the transistor. And so you have a long time to discharge the distributed gate resistance in the MOSFET device, and that slows turn off significantly. With a negative gate drive, you can have 10 or 15 volts reverse bias on the distributed resistance of the MOSFET device and get the MOSFET off very quickly. Now, here are a couple more circuits that make use of very simple bipolar drivers. This particular one, we have a control turn on of, of this MOSFET. And so this particular circuit is a synchronous flyback. And the way the circuit works, when we have positive voltage on these two windings, we have positive voltage here, and then we have positive voltage here. Current flows through D1, R1, into the gate of Q2, and that turns Q2 on, and that allows us to reduce the voltage from the body diode drop to a voltage as low as a tenth of a volt, and that saves a significant amount of losses in the, in the MOSFET device. And when we go low, we have a very fast turnoff on the transistor also. We have a negative voltage across R2 into the base of Q1, and that discharges the gate to source capacitance of Q2 very quickly. We also have a, 
a speed up capacitor in, in C1 that increases the turn on speed of Q1. And then finally, since we will reverse the voltage on C1 during the negative cycle, we have to protect the base emitter junction of Q1 during the turn on. And so we've added this diode D2 to allow only six tenths of a volt reverse bias voltage across the base emitter of Q1. Sometimes you have a requirement where you have a very wide input voltage range and you want to drive your synchronous rectifiers all off your transformer windings again. Uh, this particular case, this is a high, higher voltage output out of the power supply and we can see significantly more voltage on the gates of the transistors than they can take. And so what we've done with this circuit here is we limited the positive voltage that will be applied to the gate to source of Q1 by a small Zener regulator that clamps the voltage on the base of Q2 and limits the drive into Q1. We have a similar circuit on Q4 during the other side of the operation of the synchronous rectifier. So in summary, you can replace 75 cents worth of driver with about 4 cents worth of discretes. And these discretes can provide you with high current drives. They can drive significantly over 2 amps of current. And this has a couple of other advantages. One of them, it gets the heat out of the control IC, the heat that is generated when you drive the gate of the MOSFET is put back into the transistors. A second thing that it does, it gets the high current out of the controller. And many times this high current from the gate drives is disruptive to the controller IC itself. It can cause variations in the reference and variations in the set point of the power supply as well as lead to noisy operation. These little simple drivers can also be interfaced to transformers for isolation. Um, you can do simple little buffers like we saw in our first example, or you can do some voltage con conditioning and speed up with these drivers too. So for more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search on power tips, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks for your attention.